Guys, um, this one's gonna be a little different um, because I'm not gonna do any um, a review review of any ROI DAP or any other platform. Um, I had a couple of requests just to explain why ROI DAPs are so high risk um, and why you need to just kind of take care before you just jump into any of them and you know put any you know large sums of of tokens into these things. Um, they can provide you know great amounts of reward. Um, but with that reward comes the risk, um, you know, it's high risk, high reward. Um, and the problem with that is, you know, sometimes a lot of people get left out, um, kind of holding the bag. Let me explain why that happens. Um, and you know, you can, you know, the most common phrase for this is, is a Ponzi scheme. It means, you know, there's a, everybody invests a bunch of money. There's one pot. Um, the problem is it's not creating anything new. It's not, you know, spinning up any new tokens. It's not doing anything all the way other than um, shifting around that balance. Um, so, you know, when we invest and reinvest in it, it's not creating anything more um, uh, in the overall balance. So with that, let's look at this. Let's, you know, they call it a Ponzi scheme. Um, ROI dApps for the most part are kind of hybrid Ponzi schemes because they also um, add things like taxes and things like that that can extend the contract um, that you know offset all the users that are leaving or withdrawing funds um, and the new investments coming in, it kind of offsets if the new investments are less than what's being withdrawn. So that being said, let's look at just a straight, like, you know, quote unquote Ponzi scheme. Um, let's say you've got three users, Jim, Bob, and Fred. Um, all of them jump into this uh, ROI DAP or whatever, and they stick in 100. It doesn't even matter what 100 is. It could be dollars, Matic, Bitcoin. I mean, yeah, that would be pretty crazy, right? Um, they throw this in there. Um, and Jim was first, Bob, and then Fred. Uh, let's say this thing had, I don't know, 300% return, you know, crazy high after 30 days. Um, it comes to the end. The first one that can withdraw is Jim. So Jim withdraws 300 because he's making 300%. And he withdraws. Balance goes to zero. Bob and Fred get nothing. Um, that's very, um, very simple and very you know, um, easy to see on a very small scale. Um, now, if there are more Jim, Bobs, and Freds here, if we copy these guys and bring them down here, you know, Jim's $300 or 300 whatever withdraw, you know, didn't drain the balance, but, you know, because we've got, you know, 900 um, invested. So more people, the first, you know, first three people, you know, they withdraw as well. Then the balance goes to zero. So these more investments funded these returns. Um, and these, all these guys are left out in the cold and get nothing. And these guys got all the money. So, um, there are ways to extend this, you know, not as high of, let's say you get 150%, you know, that can go, you know, twice as far and on and on and on. Um, so the key here is, you know, what if Jim decided instead of, you know, withdrawing all, he's only going to take half of that. He gets 75. This guy takes out 75. This guy takes out 75 and so on. You know, we can copy this all the way down. You know, that first withdrawal, they all got 75 back, you know, 75% of their balance, but they, you know, still haven't hit their return on investment. They didn't get their initial out. And while this is happening, they get more investments. And the next month they can withdraw another 75 and then they make their 150 because other people invested as well. Um, then there could be, you know, taxes, you know, a 10% tax on all of these, you know, that's 750 each. So 
yeah, you know, when you see things that are like, hey, there we've got a 20% reinvestment requirement on withdraw or a 10% tax on deposits or withdraws, it's only there to basically extend the life of the contract and um, push out how many people can get their returns on these investments. Um, but you can see how how incredibly high risk this is um, because you're, if you're the last guy in line here and you put in and hardly anybody puts in behind you, you you're probably gonna be the last one holding the bag, you know, and that bag's not gonna have anything in it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basics on how these things work. Um, so yeah, these, these things really take um, a community effort. You know, if one person puts in a lot, it can, it can really mess things up. For instance, in this one, you know, what happens if Bob here, he's a whale and he puts in, you know, tons, you know, I didn't even count. Yeah, that's a hundred thousand. Everybody else put a hundred. Well, at the end of the contract, he decides, you know, I'm going to take, you know, this much, nobody else gets anything. That balance goes down quick. I mean, he could, you know, something like that. And that destroys it for everybody else in the contract. It's over because as soon as Bob the whale here put this thing in, you know when he's going to withdraw, he's going to make way more of the interest than everybody else below him. So when he withdraws, all of the stuff that they deposited is gone. Um, so yeah, you got to watch out for those whales. And that's also important to get as many um, of the quote unquote little guys as possible to get in and offset these guys um, to try to keep them from ruining, uh, ruining everything. Um, anyway, yeah, that's just a quick rundown of why these things are so high risk. Um, there is a lot of reward because, you know, if you're the early ones in there and you jump in there, you can get quite a bit out of them. Um, but you don't want to be that guy that doesn't help the community by reinvesting. Um, so yeah, but yeah, if you have any comments, leave them, uh, leave them down below. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, I've got some, a few more ROI app, uh, dApps coming out. Um, that look interesting across a few different networks. Um, just remember, this is not investment advice. I'm not saying, you know, jump in these, these ROI, uh, ROI dApps. Um, they've got a lot of investment potential, but I am not responsible for your decisions. Um, this is only information. You know, I do not give financial advice. This is just information that you can make decisions off of, but it's up to you to make those decisions. And I'm not liable for those. Anyway, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I've got some more videos coming up soon. Anyway, we'll catch you on the next one.